Now that we created our billing portal API, let's set up a way to protect this billing portal API so only authorized users with the correct customer ID could use it. If you're following along with the application that you got off GitHub, this already has identity set up within it and it already has a way to get a JWT token, things like that. If you're totally new to identity and authorization, authentication of users, creating JWT tokens, that's a course within itself and I already have a mini course for that. If you go to oopcoders.com, you'll find that up here and it'll be this link right here. So if you go to this, it will be a little mini course on how to use identity. This mini course, we go into how to generate JWT tokens, how to set up roles, things like that. And it's a really good course to check out. And I already have that set up within this application because I didn't want to get too much into the weeds on different topics other than Stripe on this course. So let's try to log in. If we log in and we log in as the customer, and if you already ran your migration and you're following along with this project, you should already have a customer in the database and the password should be password. So once you log in and you successfully log in, you should have a token, a JWT token inside of your local storage and we do. This is how we're gonna authorize the users. We'll, we'll make sure we send this in. This will allow the user to use the API. Then also we can get information from this token, like the username. And then once we get that username, then we could get the user from the database. And that's how we'll get the customer ID. So let's jump back into our payments controller and protect that API. Back in our customer portal API, the first thing we'll do to protect this API is make sure anyone using this API is authorized. And we'll use the authorized attribute. So I'll add that here. So anyone that doesn't have a token won't be able to use this API. And I'll bring this in from Microsoft ASP.NET Core authorization. So this is a good first step for protecting this API, but it's not enough. The next thing we want to do is get the user from the database by the user's username. And one thing you don't want to do is pass it in here. The reason is, is you never want to trust anything from the client. So the user could be logged in and pass in somebody else's username and get access to their information. We don't want that. What we want to do is get the username from the authorized token, the JWT token. And that's what we'll set up up here at the top. So this is one way of getting the username from the token. We'll get it from the claim principal. And I'll make sure I bring that in. And you want to bring that in from system security claims. Inside this principal is a bunch of claims. And we're going to grab the first or default claim. And we're grabbing the user's username. That's what we're after. So inside of this claim now is going to be the user's username. And we could use that to get their information from the database. So let's work on that next. So I created a variable called user from DB and we'll pull in the user manager in a second, but the user manager, the identity user manager has a method called find by name. And then we pass in the user's username and we should get the user from the database this way. Let's set up the user manager inside the constructor. I'll add that right on towards the end right here. And it's going to be the user manager and I'll bring that in from Microsoft ASP.NET Core Identity. And then we'll bring in the user and that's gonna come in from API Data Entities. And we'll need to add another property to that pretty soon and we'll do a migration, we'll take care of that pretty soon. And we'll first initialize this user manager, create a private property and change this. And now we have access to our user manager and that should take care of the error down here. So there should be no more error here. Now we want to do a check to make sure that the user's in the database. So we'll do an if statement right here. So if there's any funny business going on, like if there is no username or user in the database, we'll just return a bad request. Now if there is a user, then we'll use the user's customer ID and we'll pass that in here. But we currently do not have that within the table. So let's set that up. We'll open up our user entity and that's inside the data folder. And that's the one right there, the user. And we'll go ahead and save this so we don't get any build errors for that. And we'll add another property to the user. And inside the user class, we'll add the customer ID property. 
and we can save this. And then we need to do a migration before we actually use this customer ID. So let's open up the command line and I'll jump into our application, shut this down, clear everything out, create our migration. I'm gonna call this add customer ID to user. And the output's gonna be inside of the data and our migrations folder. And hit enter. So we should have a new migration inside of our migrations folder if we open that up. And there it is, great. Now let's go ahead and update the database. Database update. Now the user should have a new column called customer ID. Let's check that out. I'll close this down. Throughout this course, we're using SQLite for the database. If you're not familiar with SQLite, I made a couple of videos on how to use SQLite. If we go back to oopcoders.com, and for now I have it at the bottom, but you're looking for install DB browser SQLite. That's what we're using right here. And that's a very good video on that. And then also there's an extension on using SQLite in Visual Studio Code, and I go over that in this video. So if you're interested in learning more about SQLite, I highly recommend checking out those two videos. If we go back to uh, SQLite or DB Browser SQLite, now what we're interested in is making sure that our customer ID is under the ASP.NET users table. And what I'll do is I'll browse the data, and then you wanna go to ASP.NET users, and then we currently have a customer ID now column within our table. And that's exactly what we're looking for. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to edit this and I'm going to add in the customer ID manually for now. The reason is, is later on what we're going to do is we're going to have it where this customer ID automatically gets updated by using a Stripe webhook. But since we don't have that set up yet, we'll put the customer ID in right here. Let's go back into our project. And what we'll do is we'll copy this customer ID. So copy this and we'll put it within our database. So I'll add it here. And then make sure it's text and then apply it. And then if we close this down, we should see it and there it is. And just, just to be safe, make sure you write the changes. Now that we have a customer ID inside of our database, let's add that here and replace this. So user from DB, customer ID. So now we're getting our customer ID from the database. Before we work on the front end, let's make sure we test this API, make sure everything is working. So I'll clear this out and run, rerun the application and open up Postman. Back in Postman, if we try to run this API now, we should get back a unauthorized. Let's try it. And we did, we got back a 401 unauthorized. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now let's put in a valid token. If we go to account login, and then we log in with our account, so customer and password and login. We get back this token, copy the token, and then jump back to our API, and then inside of the authorization, we'll add a bear token. Select that, and then I'll replace this one. and then hit send again and it should let us use it and it did and we get back a url like we did before now if we put in something that's not valid like remove the e and hit send we still get a 401 unauthorized perfect now that we have a secure api now let's finally move to the front end and send the customer off to the billing portal from our angular application and we'll work on that in video seven